if you've ever been shopping on Black Friday, you know how crazy it gets. The lines, the mad rush, the chaos, the deals on over-the-top products. You may know the feeling of getting there too late and what you're really in need of was sold out. And therefore, you had to settle for less. Well, welcome to the world of college baseball and recruiting. Next Wednesday's National Signing Day is like Christmas Day for college baseball programs all across America. Kids from all over the nation will sign their national letters of intent to play for the universities from which they committed. Now, if Wednesday is like Christmas Day for college and universities, then you'd have to agree that Black Friday took place all summer and all fall long during the recruiting season. But on the flip side, every year, thousands of kids all over America living in places like Colorado are missed due to the lack of college exposure. Though the club ball programs and the recruiting services promised to provide supreme amount of exposure, when the shopping was all done, these young, inspiring players are left feeling like they're on the clearance rack of the baseball world. If you're a high school or junior high player, or the parent of a junior high or high school player, this information is for you. Come with me on this journey as we explain how Colorado kids can level the playing field on the amount of exposure given to other kids in other parts of the country. Welcome to beautiful Colorado, a place with a very rich baseball tradition. Now, Colorado is just more than the home of the Colorado Rockies, but it's the home of Mark Johnson, one of America's most successful high school baseball coaches. It is the home of the Junior College World Series, played at Sam Saplesio Field in Grand Junction, named after the late, the great Sam Saplesio. Colorado is the home of the skinny, hard-throwing right-hander from Wasson High School in Colorado Springs, a Hall of Famer they call Goose. Baseball in our state has its challenges, of course. The cold climate only permits high school baseball to go about 19 games during the spring. And therefore, the training and the development of young players compared to other players in other climates has been limited. Now, having said that, for many years, colleges and universities in warmer regions failed to recruit Colorado kids, feeling that the talent pool in their own backyard was better. But after a recent string of Major League players, top-round draft picks, hundreds of players competing at top Division I schools, and this year, three high school baseball players in the state of Colorado are ranked among America's top 50. And now, Colorado is being called the missing hotbed of high school talent. To explain the importance of exposure and how it's created, we're going to go through a mock scenario using fictional players. Now, before we get into this, we need to lay some groundwork first. First, let's start by explaining college baseball. There are roughly 1,600 programs all across the country, making that about 50,000 players total. With the NCAA, there are 298 Division I programs, allowing 11.7 scholarships. There are 238 Division II programs with nine scholarships, and then 365 Division III programs with no scholarships. With the NAIA, there are 205 schools with 12 scholarships, and with the NJCAA, the National Junior College Athletic Association, there are about 512 junior colleges with about 24 scholarships. If you were to ask some of the finest coaches in college baseball their means for coaching, they'll tell you one thing, winning. They'll also say that winning doesn't take place just in Omaha. It takes place in the recruiting grounds throughout the summer 
and falls of America's ballpark. Kids in Colorado and other places in the Rocky Mountain region know the importance of catching the eye of recruiters and knowing that top Division I programs rarely come to this area to recruit, they're left to showcase their abilities in areas of the country that are heavily recruited. There's no other means quite like club baseball and travel baseball for exposure. Like most club sports, the cost of travel, hotels, equipment, and team fees can cost thousands of dollars per year just in baseball alone. Some Colorado players have been invited to play for elite programs such as the Midland Redskins that produce players such as Barry Larkin, Ken Griffey Jr., Eric Holzmer, and Zach Grinke, and 64 other Major League Baseball players. Programs like this attract the best players in the country due to the incredible travel schedule, top-line exposure, and the $1 million budget to cover expenses for its players. As of late, programs like the D-Back Mustangs and the Utah Marshals have developed the same model. Granted, most club programs don't operate with this type of budget. Therefore, parents and players are left footing the bill. But many parents say they don't mind spending the money for club ball as long as it's funding the opportunity for their child to gain as much exposure as possible. But that's where the frustration is setting in. The exposure promised is seldom the exposure that's granted. Now that we understand the talent pool of Colorado, club programs, and the importance of college programs going out to recruit, let's take a look at our scenario as we explain how all of this fits together. It is now in the fall of 2014, and down in College Station, Texas, Texas A&M head coach Rob Childers and his recruiting coordinator are now preparing for next year's recruiting season. Like most top Division One programs, they've mapped out a list of venues, tournaments, and events to attend as well as a list of players they need to see to possibly fill certain key positions. Also, like many top schools, the Aggies have recruited so many years in advance that their only need for 2016 is a left-handed pitcher. 750 miles away from the campus of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, Coach Corbin and his bunch are coming off another impressive season winning the College World Series in 2014. Other than looking for two good pitchers, Corbin and his staff are finished recruiting for 2016 and have their eyes set on their knees for 2017 and 18. Out in the Pac-12, though Coach Horton at Oregon received early commitments from an in-state shortstop and catcher, he believes that losing his Friday night starter to the draft might shake up some things in his rotation. His priority? is to replace him with a top 2016 arm or junior college transfer that will be ready to become a weekend starter in the Big 12. Here's how other programs across the country are prepping for the 2016 recruiting season. While college and universities are mapping out their recruiting schedules, back in Colorado, club teams are now mapping out their 2015 summer and fall schedules as well. While all programs promise exposure to their players, let's take a look at three fictional club programs here in Colorado and compare their schedule and team prices to determine which club team is more suitable for exposure. We will rate each event on the schedule with our Gold Star rating. The Heat, for example, has a fee of $1,500. Their schedule includes the local and state tournament, the Sunny Classic in Florida, the Independence Day Annual Showcase, the High Plains event, and the Connie Mack Tournament. The Strikers, with a fee of $3,500, includes local and state tournaments, the one event with the American Canadian Championship in Dallas, the Derby Invitational, High Plains, and the Connie Mack. The Cobras, with a fee of $5,100, the Goodyear Classic, American Canadian Championship, Warrior Invitation, Midwest Showcase Tournament, and the Peach Classic. Now that we know the setup, the fees, and the schedule of these fictional club programs, 
Let's take a look and see where some of Colorado's top high school players will choose to play. Let's begin with looking at some of the top players in the country. Let's start with looking at the number one player in the country of the class of 2016, Chris Meek from Birmingham, Alabama. Meek will return and play for the Midland Redskins for the second season in a row. Meek's fastball set around 94 to 97 this summer, but at the World Championship this fall in Jupiter, Meek touched 99 on the gun. Though he's committed to Auburn since he's been a high school sophomore, in all likelihood, Meek will become the first overall pick in 2016. Miles Walker from Springs, Texas will play for the D-Bat Elite for the second year in a row. As the fifth best player in the class of 2016, Walker is certainly a five-tool player and that will certainly make him a first-round pick. However, with academics like this, the reported asking price of $3.7 million will be what it will take for a major league club to pull him away from his commitment to Stanford. Speaking of student-athletes, take a look at Bo Howard from Model High School in Colorado. Howard will play for the Florida Travel Program this summer and is ranked second in the class of 2017. With the best pop time of all prep catchers, the stockpile of catchers already committed to Georgia Tech led Howard to commit to the University of Oklahoma this spring. Meet Sean. His high school coach had always wanted him to play for the high school team during the summer and promised to make all the phone calls and college contacts for him. But as it turns out, going into his senior year, there are no offers. He decides to play for the Heat this summer in hope of catching someone's eye. Though he has some skills and ability, the schedule is not conducive enough for prime time exposure as Sean has very little time to make a big impression. Kevin was told that since he's only going into his junior season, he had plenty of time for college exposure. His outstanding performances at the Perfect Game event this fall, however, had others wanting to see more in the summer. Understanding how important it is to play in America's top events, he has decided to go with the Scorpions and showcase his talent on the big stage. Meet Brian. Very loose arm, very projectable. A couple of junior college scouts saw him at 88 in a spring game in which it was only 30 degrees. Hoping to impress one of the big schools, he is nearly willing to go anywhere that will take him. Jackson is a kid who's just really underdeveloped. His private hitting coach, however, made he and his parents believe that he had a chance to play at the high level. But when his batting average dropped to 219, his parents blamed the high school coach for replacing him. Thinking that he was the caliber player that his private coach made him think he was, his folks were more than happy to pay the $5,100 to play for the Scorpions to get visibility from T.J. Bruce at UCLA and Tracy Smith at Arizona State. With his father passing two years ago, Bryce Newman had not much time for baseball. Never giving college baseball much thought anyway, his high school coach clocked him at 91 during a scrimmage in the fall. Without much money, and knowing his family needed help on the farm, Bryce decided to stay home and play with his high school summer team. Sean threw the ball very well in the summer of 2015. Though his velocity was down to 84-86 at the Summer Classic in Florida, it was still enough to impress Georgia Southern, Tampa, Upstate South Carolina, and Liberty. However, his academic issues made him too big of a risk. It took Crane a little while to find his groove, but when he did, he was electric. At the Midwest Showcase, this young 16-year-old touched 89, and then at the Peach Classic one week later down in Atlanta, he was at 90, giving up only one hit through seven innings. Though many offers were on the table, one week before his junior year of high school was to start, Crane committed to the Wolfpack at North Carolina State. Downing was pretty good in 2015 as well. Though elbow trouble put him on the sideline for a lot of the summer, at the American Canadian Classic, he featured his above-average breaking ball and a fastball that flashed 91. Rob Childress at Texas A&M really wanted to see more, but due to visibility in the schedule, that became an issue.
Downing was contacted with a team out of the Northeast and would travel with them to the Perfect Game World Championship in Jupiter. Brian flashed 92 with supreme ease, and it was enough for Chad Holbrook of South Carolina to offer him a scholarship late in the recruiting year. Jackson was just simply overmatched. It was clear that everything his private coach told him about his ability wasn't true. Seeing fastballs ranging from 89 to 96 all summer proved to be a very humbling experience for this young shortstop. Now for the best story of the summer. Brian Newman's mother got a call from work wondering if Bryce would consider coming to the Peach Classic in Georgia with the Scorpions. A parent on the team, who was a software developer, remembered Bryce when he was only 11 and offered to pay for Bryce and his mother to come to the tournament. And the rest, you have to see to believe.